We have heard from Ray a lot about what's happening and what is good happening in Australia. But then, how does this really link up to what's happening here in Malaysia? We all know housing conditions are different, habits are different. So what is the real impact here in Malaysia? To find that out, um, it's not just me alone, but uh, a whole team. We worked for about four months and did a very in-depth study on what would happen if Malaysia would insulate. So now, some figures, I hope I'm making not too boring, for you about impact here in Malaysia. Look at the current housing stock. So all the numbers that are coming are very aggregate numbers because, I mean, this is a forum and we have 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, but for example, we, we split the types of houses into over 10 different types. We looked at how many of these houses for each kind of occupied IMT. What, how many air cons does each house have? Um, how many of these houses um, will follow two hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours usage in which rooms, and so on. So there is a lot behind that which is not going to show. Very short presentation is around three main topics, and this is following um, what we've heard before this morning from the Ministry of Energy, Green Technology and Water, these four pillars of energy efficiency. So it's talking about energy, energy savings, it's talking a bit about the environmental impact, and then social and economic benefits. Housing is a key driver of energy consumption and of all the negative things that go with energy consumption. And within this demand, commercial and residential is the main factor. I mean, it's just the largest number of houses. And if we look at the amount of aircon being used, uh, I mean, aircon in an office building is, is the main contributor to energy. It's not the computer running and it's not the, the elevator, it's really the aircon. And for a private house, it's even for a private house on average across Malaysia, a whooping 23%. That's a lot. So what would mean insulating houses? When I say insulating houses, I'm talking about a roof and a wall insulation. And this is I'm not going to bore you with some technical R values, but this is not the high-end insulation we're talking here, okay? Um, the key takeaway from this slide is the savings is enormous, but the savings are enormous only if it's including retrofitting. If we focus and about these very beautiful new malls or these new houses, that's nice, and everyone will be very proud because there's a very energy efficient building, that's great. But the economic impact, the savings impact, will only be realized if it's only if it's also including retrofitting houses. Yeah? Very, very important. And to give you a better idea what we what, what is 3,300 gigawatts, um, a normal power plant, this, this is about 800 um, megawatt power plants, so you could save one or two power plants. This is about the, the magnitude. Of course, insulation is not going to happen in one day. The slide before was talking if it today everything would be insulated, this is the result. Insulation. We assume a phased approach. We've seen in Australia, they're facing it in over several years. So if we would take a very generous 10 years, this is the energy saving. And of course, it's a bit higher. So at the end of 10 years, because energy demand is increasing, we're talking about 4,000 gigawatt um, that can be saved ultimately in, over the next 10 years. Environment, you see, I'm very quick. It's really just the, the big numbers. 2.5 million tons of CO2 can be saved. And this comes as a side benefit, if you want, of the energy saving. 
the real nice thing about insulation is, and I'm not here as a marketing guy, no, I don't have to sell you something, I've done my work already, is it only has benefits. This is the payback time. And we heard before, 10 years is too long because nobody plans for 10 years. That might be true or not. I'm not here as a, a social analyst. I cannot tell you and uh, I'm sure a government intervention will help. It's probably necessary to build the framework and the government is well on the way. But even without a government intervention, it's very hard to resist an insulation. And I will come to this in my book summary. Um, more good things. It will create a significant amount of now qualified jobs here in Malaysia. 20,000 jobs is a nice number. It won't happen within a half year because, as I said before, we expect a retrofit to last for about 10 years' time. But these are Malaysian jobs. So, key takeaways. First is residential, residential insulation is key. It's not enough to look at office buildings or some factory buildings. If we want to have big savings residential. The same is, we cannot just look at new buildings. We need to retrofit if we want to make an impact. But the good thing is, the energy savings will be there whether you retrofit or you will have a new building. You save the same amount of energy, it doesn't matter. So, we reduce energy consumption, as I said before. We save 790 million energy subsidies and another over 1 billion in private, in this, uh, private energy bills. We create jobs. If it's your house, within 10, month, 10 years you get your money back, and I think we all agree we want to live longer than that. It increases the comfort and quality of living. I mean, we all live here with aircon. When we go home and the aircon is out, it's like, first thing, switch on. So if I have insulation and it keeps my home cooler for a longer period of time, that's a real improvement. Nothing I can measure numbers here. This is all about numbers. Fire safety. I have, I have two children. Um, I don't expect my house to burn within the next hundred years. So this is not something tangible. But yeah, I mean it comes for free, thrown in. So yeah, I take it. I mean fire safety. Why not? Better acoustics is also good. Children make a lot of noise. But that's not why I'm going to insulate. And then we have the other impact for the environment. So, it's basically coming for free because it's paid itself in 10 years, or with government intervention sooner. It also does some good things to the environment. So, Malaysia has this very long coastline and floods are increasing. So, there is a real impact of global warming. I'm sure we'll hear more, much more about global warming today. This is really about the impact for Malaysia. But So, we have 2.5 million tons of CO2. That's nice. Comes on top of it. And this mineral wool insulation is also because some of the technologies are, when you make them, not really carbon friendly. In mineral wool insulation will also bring 100 times its own carbon footprint. That's a nice thing to do. If you want to have more details, because this basically brings me already to the end of my study. <laughs> more information on the details because there is a lot of underlying data to subset, uh, substantiate those numbers. Please, after the conference, or we, we can sit together, or I can give you some more details, I'm more than happy to do this. Because these are really just flashing big numbers and headlights at you. But what needs to be done now is a little bit retrofitting. Uh, hopefully, when I'm back for the next conference on green energy efficiency in buildings, I see more than 2% uh, 
I mean, that would be nice to know we can raise it to 3 or 4 percent. There is this green building index, which was introduced in July, which is great. It needs to be filled with life, and there needs to be a Malaysian standard fitting to Malaysian conditions, which is great. And I think nobody has money. That includes the government in the first place. But if the government is willing to reinvest its subsidy savings, so net zero, that could help a lot in driving down the payment periods and help in implementing more efficient And that's basically all. Thank you very much.